Hey, thanks for joining me. In this video, what I want to talk about is three phase Y balanced circuits with the same power factor. So for example, a motor or something like that. Uh, if you join me in previous videos, you'll notice that I have left some of the information up here that is still relevant to this load because it is still a three phase Y balanced load. For example, I've left all of the voltage phasers. We still have our VA to N as our reference at zero which means our E A to B is going to lead that reference by 30 degrees. I still have my C to N at 120 degrees, which means my E C to A is at 150 degrees, leading by 30 again. And I have my V B to N at 240 degrees, which means my E B to C is at 270 degrees. As I previously mentioned, that relationship will not change as long as we have a Y connected circuit with an intact neutral. Okay, it will always remain with these voltages at their respective angles. Okay, so the other thing that I've left up here as well, because we are in a Y connected circuit again, I line is equal to I phase. That does not change when we move from balanced to unbalanced. It's still the same. Okay, so we want to take a look at, again, the line currents. I'm not going to go in and do the math in this video. We can go through and make an HV chart on our own, but for now I just want to take again a look at these relationships. Okay, so let's say we have, we'll go with three phases. Uh, let's use a different color here. Three phases. Each phase has a power factor of 0.866 lag kind of redundant to put that lag because if we're talking about an inductor, it's going to have a power factor of somewhere between zero and close to one if it's closer to unity. If we're talking about leading power factors, which we'll discuss in another video, a capacitor, for example, has a power factor of zero, which means it has a power factor angle of 90. Okay, but for this load, let's talk about 0.866 lag. Now, in order to work with this on my phasor diagram, I need to convert my power factor into my actual angle. Okay, so we're going to arc cos 0.866, which will convert it to my phase angle. Conveniently for us in this, it's going to work out to 30 degrees. Nice and easy to work with. Okay, so I want to go and plot my phase currents now. Because it's balanced, I know that each one of these is going to be the same magnitude and phasor. So I'm not going to worry about numbers. I'm just going to simply plot these numbers. Okay. But if we look at the fact that E phase, actually, you know what? Let's say instead I phase will lag E phase by power factor angle, which in this case is 30 degrees. With that statement in mind, when I move over to my phasor diagram, what that tells me is if I'm looking at I A to N or the phase current for I A to N, I know that it's going to lag my phase voltage by 30 degrees. If my phase voltage is at zero, that means that I'm going to take my zero minus the 30 degrees, or in this case, 360 minus 30 degrees, which should put us somewhere around here. Again, not to scale, this is just a visual representation. Okay, so there is my I A to N at 330 degrees. Okay, now IB to N, because it has the same power factor, is going to lag VB to N by 30 degrees as well. If my VB to N is right here and my phasers are rotating counterclockwise, if I'm lagging, that means I'm going to go 240 degrees minus 30, which should put us right about here. There's my I. B to N, which is at 240 minus 30, 210. And if I plot IC to N, I know that IC to N again has the same power factor, so it should be lagging by the same amount as my other two phase currents. So our VC to N is at 120 degrees, 120 minus 30 degrees is going to give us 90 degrees. Again, I'm just keeping these phasers roughly the same in magnitude. There's my I C to N at 90 degrees, okay? So just to recap, in this particular circuit, we know that zero minus 30 degrees equals, well, negative 30 or 330. 
degrees. Okay, there's my I A to N. I B to N, we said was 240 volts is where my phase voltage is, minus 30 equals 210 degrees. And my C to N, which we said my V C to N, or my phase voltage, was at 120 degrees, minus 30 degrees, 90 degrees, okay? That's where all three of our line, or sorry, our phase currents are, which if we look at this statement right here, I can also say that's where my line currents are as well, okay? Now, thinking about that, I can look at this now and say, well, I know that I line lags E line by 30 degrees will get us to our phase voltage plus our power factor angle, plus power factor angle. So the I line will lag E line by 30 degrees plus the power factor angle. In the previous video, it ended up the same as the voltage of the phase because it was unity load and they were in phase with each other. But in this case, my I phase will lag my V phase by whatever the power factor angle is. And because I line is equal to I phase, I can say I line lags E line by 30 degrees plus that power factor angle. Okay, so hopefully this helps. I could apply this to every one of my phasers and I could prove the same thing as well. I could say that, for example, the line current, line C current, will lag E line voltage of C by 30 degrees again plus whatever that power factor angle is. In the next video, we are going to take a look at unbalanced circuits and start to see what happens with the current on the neutral. But before we move on, I want to take a look again at the relationships on the phasor diagram, similar to how I did it in a previous video. So, if I remember, I have an out-of-phase component for this phasor, and an out-of-phase component for this phasor. If I add these two up, they should perfectly cancel this out, which gives me no more out-of-phase component. Then I have this in-phase, and this in phase, this should cancel out this, which again should equal zero on neutral. Hopefully this video has helped. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.